support this regional fuel tax. The Honourable Nathan Guy. Uh, I've read quite a few of the submissions that have come through the Select Committee, and the one that I think best sums up uh, the feeling out there in New Zealand is the one from Ken Shirley from the Road Transport Forum. And he, he said that the regional fuel tax is an absolute nonsense. Here we have the minister in the chair laughing at those comments, and I can't believe that. The minister is laughing when he knows the cost of fruit and vegetables are going to go up. Because I've heard and read Ken Shirley's comments, this regional fuel tax is just going to be passed on. Who's it going to impact the most on? Those low income earners. And then all of those people in Auckland, and we didn't hear that from the previous speaker, are going to have to pay 25.3 cents in a matter of days' time. On the 1st of July, they will be hit by a double whammy. They'll get hit with a regional fuel tax and the one that's going across the whole of New Zealand. On this side of the House, we could fund roads of national significance without having to enforce a regional fuel tax. And why can we do, why can we do that? Because of prudent management. If the government is so focused on this tax, why not have a congestion tax? That's right. What we haven't heard from the other side of the House is how this is going to be spread out into other regions. And what we know is already happening is when you drive over the Bombay Hills down into the Waikato, already they know this tax is coming and the price is going to go up. What is going to have a perverse impact is motorists will probably fill their trailers and boots up with the good old jerry cans and head out of the Auckland region to fill up their jerry cans. Of course, imagine the safety consequences of that. This tax isn't needed. The government said, actually the Labor Party and other political parties now in coalition said there would be no new taxes. Now this is going to roll out and really impact not only on uh, all of Auckland, but it's going to be felt across New Zealand. Now we are debating uh, part one this afternoon, and I have got a supplementary order paper that's going to come through in my name and be on the table shortly. It's going to propose an exemption for primarily used commercial vehicles that are tra travelling with agriculture products on board. Because, as I've already mentioned, and it was uh, to the fore when the Horticulture uh, New Zealand uh, board came and presented to the Select Committee. This is going to have a, not only a big impact on fruit and vegetables, it's going to impact on all of those uh, staple food items that are going to go through to supermarkets. Those costs are going to be rolled out to all consumers. What is also really interesting, and it relates to the regional fuel tax, is in my electorate, where we have a slowdown on NZTA confirming back to the Horafanua community, 400 houses in limbo at the moment as to where the proposed route is going to go on the extension of the road of national significance from Ortaki uh, to around Levin. I'd be very interested to hear the Minister's comments on that, because he's saying, oh no, oh no, that's at arm's length, no, I don't get involved in that. And yet it was fine that he raided money out of the National Land Transport into Auckland trams. It was fine for them to bring in uh, Kiwi Rail, and well, that used to go straight through to Cabinet. So the National Land Transport Fund is being raided. Even with this regional fuel tax, there won't be enough money, in my view, to build the Horofanu Expressway. And what was summarised the best was from the former coroner when he likened that section of road, a killing field, marked like a battlefield with white crosses. 
Since 2013, there have been 11 deaths and 43 serious injuries. If Mr Jones over there on the government side of the House was so focused about regional New Zealand, Chair. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I call the Honourable Nathan Gold. Thank you. Good work. If Mr Jones was fo so focused about regional New Zealand, you would think that he would be supporting the Horofner Expressway. And there's so much doubt that my community are paralysed. They don't know if the government is going to confirm the route. They don't know if they're going to take a long cup of tea and say that we need to delay it. Those landowners in Horofanua need certainty. And what we have seen with the Kapiti Expressway is the huge economic development that flows on the back of a decent four-lane road. Not only is it about safety, it's about productivity, getting your produce through to the capital city of Auckland, connecting through with the lower North Island. So this regional fuel tax, bringing it back to part one, is not necessary. If the government really wanted to do something, it should be focused on a congestion tax. That's right. This is going to mean that the cost of not only the regional fuel tax, but the other tax that comes in uh, in a matter of weeks is going to be felt right across New Zealand. And this government, the government policy statement, has changed. And the concern that I have is that they have moved away from productivity. If it's focused, Minister Twyford in the chair, a question for you. If the GPS is focused on safety, Will you confirm that you will provide the funding for the Horofanua Expressway? Silence. I can't even get a, oh, it's looking up now. I can't even get a head nod, a shake of the head saying yes or no. This is the uncertainty that we have. Point of order. Point of order, Michael. Yeah, I believe that this speech, along with most other opposition speeches, are in breach of Speaker's Ruling 1103 which sets out that all speeches that select at this stage of proceedings and committee should deal with the nuts and bolts clauses of the bill. Uh, we have had absolutely nothing of that seven, eight, eight minutes into the speech. Um, it, it may well be. Uh, it is for me to judge, and I have judged that uh, the debate so far has been focused on part one. They don't have to refer to individual clauses, um, but they can talk about uh, part one of the bill, and I think I'm satisfied that that's in fact happening. Okay. Honourable Nathan. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Following on from the comments that I was uh, just making previously before uh, the point of order was raised, I still look forward to hearing from the Minister and answering, answering the questions that I have raised with him today. In particular, I also want to refer to fuel outlets, which is on part 165A subpart three. What's really important this part is about the collection of this and indeed uh, the fuel outlets and where the geographic region spreads from and then the prices that are going to incur just outside of the region. How indeed is that going to be monitored? We still don't know and we're already seeing uh, prices going up and it's really interesting when I refer back to uh, my electorate of Ortaki because uh, I have some of the cheapest fuel in the whole of the country. And it's fascinating when you go into Levin because I've got the competition there with Goal and Waitomo up the road and Foxton and Allied. And then down the road you have the big uh, BP and Z and Co and Ortaki. And often the difference between Levin and Ortaki can be 20 cents a litre on 91 fuel. And my advice until the government gets organised with their Commerce Commission uh, inquiry and the recommendations that will flow from that is that motorists should look at an app and download it called Gas Buy. Because when they're travelling around the, the country, Gas Spy is a fantastic app where you can very easily see when you go into a town. And Gas Spy will be really important when motorists move into Auckland or even just go out of Auckland. As they come over the Bombay Hill or they're travelling through Auckland, they'll know that they're going to need to pay an extra 25.3 cents with the regional fuel tax 
and the nationwide tax. So gas by app is going to be really important when they come in or out of the Auckland region, knowing where the cheapest and most efficient fuel is. Can I conclude by saying this regional fuel tax isn't warranted? I hope that the Minister will support my SOP that does allow an exemption for uh, primarily operated vehicles during the course of commercial farming operations, because I believe that's paramount. If this government wants to be inclusive and focused on poverty and looking after the most vulnerable in our community, you would think that they would make an exemption for vehicles that are carrying agriculture products, either to market or to the supermarkets and back uh, indeed to smaller outlets closer to home. So this bill isn't needed. It's yet another tax, and I look forward to the minister responding to my questions whether he supports the Horrifner Expressway. Goodness, I call Tim Van der Molen. Now, look, I'd just like to make a